So there was a video that came out maybe about last week or so, but I just didn't have a chance to get to it, but I got time because I've been wanting to talk about this particular video of, of a sister by the name of Jaguar Wright. Now Jaguar Wright, you know, she's been in the music business for a very long time. She has uh, been connected with groups like the roots. Um, she's done, you know, work with Jay Z and, and many others. Now she's an artist in her own right. Okay. So she's not a scrub or nothing like that. And if you go look on YouTube, just type in Jaguar, Wright. Go look at her interviews. You can see she's a thorough sister. She is a straight shooter. She don't mix her words at all. She tell you just how it is and how it's going to be. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this sister up is because for some reason, I guess Puffy allegedly was starting to come for her. And I have to say allegedly because he's been real quiet after this. So she put out a video on social media and I want you to hear exactly what she says. Someone told her who worked at bad boy records as an attorney, what they walked in and saw in Puffy's office, Sean Combs, Diddy, P Diddy, whatever you want to call yourself this week. Let's roll that clip. Honeycomb, honeycomb, honeycomb. Now you could have uh, pulled your minions to the side and said, look, I don't know if you want to mess with her. We don't know what she got. So I'm going to tell you what I got. I think it was like 03. Yeah. It was right before me and Music Soul Child did the uh, Grey Goose tour. There was a young woman. Beautiful woman. She's a lawyer. Or at least she was. Um, she used to be an entertainment lawyer. I'm not going to say her name. The story is enough. Cause I don't know. I, I I hope I won't be putting her in danger. Um, but she shouldn't have to feel afraid after all of these years, almost twenty years, you know. But uh, I had to give her a job. I shouldn't say I had to give her a job. I gave her a job uh, working for me, so she could find some safety. Because while she was working at Bad Boy, because she was one of the lead counsels for Bad Boy Entertainment, <clears throat> um, she witnessed something. She witnessed something that was disturbing to her. But what was really disturbing to her was the conversation that she had with Diddy after. See, Christopher Williams, I don't know, I guess he wanted to sign. I don't know what happened. But Puff was supposed to be giving him a demo deal, and he gave him a demo deal. And I guess it was supposed to turn into an album deal, which that never happened. Um, but this young woman walked in to get approval on some paperwork. Let's see. And uh, when she walked in, the door wasn't locked. So she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams performing fellatio on Puff. Now, from what she said to me, um, it was disturbing because, you know, they didn't stop. She just walked out and she just kept her head down at the office the rest of the day. I believe it was. And. I don't think it was at the end of business day that day, but I think it was the following day. He came into her office and was like, yeah, so you came in there. So what? What you going to do? You want to say something? And she was like, oh, no, I, you know, I just, she was like, I just don't understand why you left the door unlocked. If you were in there doing that, why would you leave the door unlocked? He said, I'll do whatever the fuck I want to do in my building. And she was, I just don't know. He was like, it's power, see? I can make a man, he said, if I can make a man suck my dick, I can make people do anything for money. That's what you said, Puff, about Christopher Williams sucking your dick for a demo deal. And you cut him a check. And you chase that young woman out of New York, just like you tried to chase Wendy Williams out of New York. And she came to work for me. And I loved her working for me. And when she was finally cool and could find, you know, <clears throat> a good move to move forward. She did. She was with me for less than six months. But she was a wonderful woman. And she was a brilliant attorney. And she thought she was she was signing up for the ride of her life. You know, she, she's going to be, you know, head of legal at Bad Boy Entertainment and be a female. Like, that was a big deal. Until she accidentally walked into her boss's, you know, office and caught him getting hit from um, a movie star. Which he said 
was done for nothing more than an exercise of power. Because if he can make a man suck his dick, he can make anybody do anything. That's you, Puff. That's you, Honeycomb. That's why I call you Honeycomb. Because you smack so sweet. You chased that woman out of your offices because she saw you being you. And then you threatened to ruin her life. If she ever told anyone. But she did tell someone. She told me. And I've kept her secret all of these years. You better not try to do nothing to her either. Because she ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. It's not her fault you a sodomite. She ain't had nothing to do with you being no sodomite. Forcing men to do degrading acts just so you can prove how powerful you are. Take a fucking punch, bitch. Show people how powerful you are. I mean, from the way it sounds, what I'm saying shouldn't hurt you. You've been so cool with it for so long. What was that uh, video you did? I can't even remember who it was with. Was it with Usher or something? And you was in a hotel room and you had a dildo in the bed and everybody was trying to skip past that part. And you just had a dildo in the bed. What was you using it for? Who was you using it on? Was you using it on yourself? Did somebody else use it on you? Why are you doing videos in hotel rooms with dildos and men? Only men present. Because you're a sodomite. That's why. Like I, I don't know if every man that's had a sexual dealing with you, if it's been consensual. You know, maybe you were holding some bad information over their head. Or, or, or maybe you had some, some bad information on their family. See, that's why I have exposed myself. That's why I have been transparent this entire time. Because y'all ain't going to use nothing that I've done against me. I'm going to blow me up. You should, you should take a page out of my book. The, the truth will, uh, it'll set you free. So, yeah, um. Sean Combs, I'm charging you with sodomy. I'm charging you with being a divisive human being who will do anything for a dollar. I'm charging you with ruining multiple careers and with stealing great music away from the public so you can get rich off of trash. How many fucking great artists have you blocked? How many people have you called and paid money to sign people? So that they could shelf them. So your projects could go on through. Everybody in your pocket, Puff. Probably because you got one of their secrets. You probably about the only other person in the industry that got more secrets than me. And that's because you know Clive Davis. And we all know he has lots of secrets. Clearly he trusts you. He stepped around Andre Harrell. And gave you the keys to the kingdom. Andre was in line. But then again. You know, you had it in for Andre because Andre used to make you suck his dick. And Kim Porter had footage of it. I heard a whispering about it in the Kit Kat, Kit Kat Club with somebody else. I ain't going to say who. She was in the bathroom. Get high. Talking about how she had you by the balls. And sure enough, two weeks later, she had that brand new Mercedes Benz that Andre Orell paid for. She got you good, Puff. I guess you finally got her back, huh? Right? You're alive and she dead. You won. See, what Andre did to you, it could have stopped with him. <clears throat> but you liked the power too much. So all you did was emulate what Andre Harrell did to you. See, you were a victim and then you became a victimizer. And that's what you chose. You need to tell everybody the truth about why you never married Kim. Probably because she was blackmailing you. Because she had the goods on you. So did Nisha Battle. Nisha Battle had the goods on you too. There's a lot of chicks out there that got the goods on you. So I am going to go to sleep with my gun. Just in case shots start firing around here and I got a bus back. I'm going to give me some rest. <clears throat> But I promised, uh, I promised that I was going to expose you if motherfuckers kept acting a fool on my page on you and your artist Mary J. Blige behalf. So y'all did what y'all did and I'm doing what I'm doing and now I'm going to get some rest. But I will say this to you, Sean Combs. 
You might get me. But I got you first, bitch. And you're going to burn in hell for all the lives you've destroyed on so many different levels. All of these niggas out here might be scared of you. All of these niggas out here, you might got dirt on them. But guess what? I got more dirt on you than you got on me, Puff. And you Now, after hearing that, you know, for me personally, and I told y'all, certain people got to look about them. And I see them, you know, when they, they, they have that Andrew Gillum vibe. You know, and Puffy for a long time had that Andrew Gillum vibe. It's a it's a lot of them that I can point out to you. You're like, oh yeah, they did kind of have that look about them. You get what I'm saying? But I'm not gonna run through that. This is not the video for that. But for a long time, I always thought something was up with him. You get what I'm saying? Like I always, you know, look, certain men and how they move and how they act and the attitude. You be looking at them like, hmm. You know, what's up with them? You know what I'm saying? Would you try to, you wouldn't say, man, you know, maybe it's just one of them dudes that's flamboyant. You know, you got some dudes that's very flamboyant um, and, and and they are not, you know, on team bussy. Okay. They're not. But hearing this story for me makes sense in a lot of ways. Now, of course, we have to say allegedly this happened, you know, for legal reasons, allegedly this happened. But from what Jaguar has put out there, in this video and in other videos prior to this, you know, she's talking very confident. And even in this video, she was talking about Puffy, you can sue me. Sue me if you want to. Go ahead. Because she says she's just telling it like it is, you're telling the truth. But to hear now, you know, in this music industry, we have known things like this go on and how certain people do very well get involved in drugs. Some people you know, end up committing suicide because all kinds of things happen in Hollywood. And I believe one of the best things ever was coronavirus, especially in a lot of that genre. Okay. Is not only you have that going on, you know, you, he listened to what she allegedly, you know, said that Puffy said to, to the other woman that if he can make a man do that is about power. He can make a man do anything. You get what I'm saying? Like my thing is, what kind of man are you anyway? Cause I'm sorry, no man that is like love women and everything about women. No amount of money gonna make no man get on his knees and do this to another man. Ain't no way. You're like, man, you keep your money. Matter of fact, you about to get snuffed out for even saying that to me. So it was something already in Christopher Williams, allegedly, it's all allegedly to do that. Okay. So you can't give me, you just making some dude do something that he don't want to do. No, ain't no amount of money in the world. Well, at least in my world and it, with, with my version of integrity and my version of manhood, it ain't nobody can force you to do nothing like that. It wasn't no gun to the head. And even if it was a gun to the head, some dude let me do, go ahead and shoot me. I'd rather die. I'm not doing that. Forget that. Right. But she heard the story she talked about in the hotel room with the Usher video and all the things that she, you know, has said, all the suspect things that, you know, he has done in the past. You know, she also talked about later in the video how every artist that came through Bad Boy, he would basically get him blackballed from the, from the industry. And we, we know this because every artist goes sign with him, you never see him anymore, right? Even the people used to call it the Bad Boy Curse. I remember that. And that's what done his record label in. He had the, one of the hottest record labels out there, definitely in the nineties and early two thousands for sure. He had the hottest record label. Everybody wanted to be on bad boy, right? I mean, he was the man out here, but the things he was doing and, and, and you know, she said that he possibly was trafficking people allegedly, um, as well, you know, in Hollywood, this is what she said, Andre Harrell Now Andre Harrell has died. Uh, what sometime was it did last year? or so, or maybe early part of this year. No, I think it was last year. Andre Harrell died and he was a major executive in music, Andre Harrell. And she said allegedly that Andre Harrell made him do that. Uh, uh made Puff do that to uh, Andre, the same thing he made the other guy do. Now you talk about Clive Davis. We've heard all kinds of stories about Clive Davis too out here. You know, there was a, they were talking about Tupac one time was talking about Quincy Jones. And he, he was saying that, you know, Quincy Jones allegedly wanted him to go up in his bussy. You get what I'm saying? I mean, this all this, you know, in Hollywood, all this, that going on, uh, uh, pedophilia going on. 
it's some evil go on in Hollywood in the music industry. It, it is a den of devils over there. So with her putting this out and listen, I want all of it to come out because I cover it here. This is the entertainment channel. We'll talk about all that, all that mess needs to come out because we need to know who has been just doing our people wrong in the community. Cause see, you know, he, he tries to, you know, show himself now. Like he's so, uh, pro black and all that now. Oh, he get big, big Africa shirts and all of that. And like, what about all the black folks you done wrong, man? You know, Mace was saying about, you know, Hey man, I buy my catalog back from you. You wouldn't give Mace uh, his, his catalog. You know what I'm saying? You know what he said? It's one of the most sucker things he ever said to Mace. He said, well, if you're going to offer me the money, the white man going to offer me, then, then I, uh, you know, you can buy it. Say, wow. But you got a big Africa shirt on uh, a puffy. Now, this is, this is what, you know, Mace has said, and we had covered that actually on yeah this particular channel, uh, when May said that about his, you know, his masters and things like that. So Puffy been dirty for a long time. You know, you look at some people question, even Jaguar question where all his money come from because his records wasn't making money like that. You get what I'm saying? They say, is he, did he take money from, uh, you know, notorious big to state? Cause did he help him set it up? I mean, is it, Guys like that, that make moves like that, no matter who they are, right? They have no integrity, no morals, no all that matters is them. That's it. But let me know what y'all think about it. You I mean you you believe Jaguar? What she's saying that this uh, lawyer uh, told her that this happened at Bad Boy Records in 2003. Do you believe? And this was one of the height at the time Bad Boy was at. It was the early 2000s, so they were still on top at that time period. I remember that. Do you believe this happened or do you don't believe Jaguar? But I, I'm going to say it's my opinion. I believe her because I've seen Jaguar's, you know, interviews. I see how she get down. And like I said, she's not a person, you know, that you would say, nah, she's just BSing. But that's my opinion. But let us know in the comments what you think.